All right, the long overdue review and walkthrough of my Sun Dolphin Pro 120. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick walk around and then I'm gonna get into it for you guys. All right, let's fire her up. Give her some juice. All right, so in the heart of the boat, we got two different breakers over here and two different fuse panels. The bottom one is for all the accessories, the, all the lights, the bilge pump, anything like that on the boat. Then you got the top one, which is strictly for the top fuse panel. And that's used for just the fish finder stuff. I didn't want any interference. That's for the Garmin, the Garmin Live Scope, the Helix, and the Mega 360. Um, I did everything with overkill. I mean, I used six gauge wires from the breakers to the fuse panels, and then like 10 gauge wire for the fish finders, stuff like that. Everything's in there super neat. And then on this side, we have the breaker for the trolling motor and the wires on that are ran on this side of the boat away from those wires, which those wires all run on that side of the boat. Then getting into the hatches, we got these uh, custom lids that I got made by Nate from Tiny Boat Nation. These things are awesome. They have this built-in track, then there's a drain tube. So, I mean, I have like watertight compartments. I can put a ton of stuff in here. I usually keep my fish finder in here, one of them, a bunch of other stuff. Everything stays nice and dry. Almost like a real bass boat, you know? Then I got my micro power pole, made my own mount. Use a one eighth piece of aluminum square tube. And then I use these truck bushings for that are meant for skateboarding, but these are great. They're good for shock absorption. You know, nothing gets loose. I've had this on there for over two years bouncing around and these things haven't budged. Same thing for the trolling motor, it's the same thing. Back here, we got all the juice. This thing is powered by three 100 amp hour batteries. Um, I really like these a lot. These are the Amped Outdoors. I got these from Tiny Boat Nation. Nick Barr hooked me up. Powers the boat. I mean, I got two just for the troll motor and then one for the fish finder and everything else. And back here, I also added, there's, there's a cutout here that I did an access port. Just because you could drain the water out, but it's still going to pool back here. And then it's going to like seep into your um, insulation and stuff like that. And then the boat's just going to absorb all that moisture and it's going to get heavy over time. So I like to take a vacuum after a heavy day of rain, get all that water out, put a fan over here, dry it all nice. It'll pre preserve the longevity of the boat. We got the uh, live well here. I got, I had added my own timer switch on here. You could use it manual or put it on timer. Um, I changed the functionality of this live well completely. It usually comes with a bilge in here and it just recirculates all the water. Um, I moved that. I put the aerator in there. It pumps fresh water into here. And then I have a over, uh, overflow tube right here. So once it reaches a certain level, it'll just go back out. So you're, you're putting fresh water in there, freshly oxygenated water, keeping the fresh, the fish nice and healthy. All right, we're gonna keep walking around. I did a custom rod holder. Um, I got this idea from a buddy of mine. This thing doesn't come off the boat at all. It's awesome. Um, and then I even added this thing in the back right here. If you want to add a couple more rods, you can put them down nice and gently on there. Got some foam on there. It's not the best looking, but um, functionality is a little more important than uh, aesthetic sometimes. I try to keep things looking nice, but sometimes you need functionality more than anything. Got the troller motor up here. Got the Tor Pro 24 volt. This thing is sweet. Um, had to make my own mount for the 360 because they didn't saw one at the time. Not sure if they do now. Um, this is the 1 8 aluminum again truck bushings this thing has never gotten loose i mean this thing has a ton of power you know and the shock absorbers just absorb all that shock it's it's really great and same thing back here this is a piece of 3 16 aluminum super thick made a custom bracket nice and neat powder coated black truck bushings on the bottom toggle anchors into the boat little sea deck on top there oh let me show you guys this little juice right here for you night scope uh live scope guys for nighttime this right here is the juice, the glowing dark arrow. You can figure out what that does. Walk into the uh, business end over here. We got Helix 12 and a uh, Garmin 8616. 
to fire that bad boy up. You can put your custom logo on there, picture, whatever. Um, this mount is the bee's knees right here. This was a custom mount that Nate from Tiny Boat Nation made. Same guy that makes these lids. Um, I actually worked with him on this. He took my design and made it even better. You know, put his own input on it. Um, if you want like a really nice flush look that's tight, this mount is for you. And not only that, but you could accessorize it. It comes with attachments on the sides. Um, so I got a cup holder. And then I got this thing that comes with two plier holders. I actually added a, another rod holder here. Because when I land a fish, I land them on this side of the boat. I like to just put the rod down. And it's just a place to put your rod. It's phenomenal. And then we got this uh, little three amp hour port that I put in here. You got two spots there. It's super fast charging your phone. With this unit, you could actually screen record. So I'll usually plug my phone in, keep it in that cup holder. And I mean, it charges super fast. Things sweet. Then I got my switches up here. I got one for the Garmin LiveScope box, one for the Mega 360. I got one for the hydro wave and then one for the in inside hatch lights and the other one is for the deck lights in the front i like to keep it separate from the back cup holder you need cup holders everywhere put a little gator gator skin over here i like to land on this uh side i always have the net rubbing on this side so this this area gets a lot of wear and tear this stuff is great it sticks really well i used it uh in the back too where the batteries are as well um got the compartment here same size as that one i keep usually my scales whatever stuff that i grab every day this is a uh little cooler i made i usually use it as a dry box to be honest day box whatever but i took two totes and in between i put spray foam this thing is super insulated i put a uh, a drain tube in the middle that runs to the back of the boat to the bilge so if you have ice you could put ice in there drain it out at the end of the day but like i said i usually typically just use it as a uh, day box and i bring like a different a bigger cooler because i'm a hungry boy um this hatch is awesome. This thing goes all the way to the front right here. And I actually fit, there's two lights in there, all the way back there and in the front. I fit four of these Plano 3700s. I mean, I literally have all the tackle I need for a full day of fishing. Um, I have tackle in this one as well. I can fit a ton of stuff in here. I mean, I got all my soft plastic trailers and stuff like that. And then I got a bunch of stuff. I even have room for a catch board in here is sweet you know those things are nice for pictures all right let me walk around this side i'll show you what the other switches do i have two nav light ports this one is specifically made for a yolo tech i ran 12 gauge wire to that so it gets good juice that's a standard nav light port all right so for the cabin area let's go over this switch panel first switch is for the live well pump in there this second switch is for that second yolo tech port that i made for my gopro this one is for the actual nav lights. I changed these out because the original ones were all beat up. So these look nice LEDs. Don't gotta worry about bulbs. And here I got a nice cabin light, which is great for taking pictures at night. Um, I like to put my catch board here. It's a good area. The fish can't jump out. Cause you know how they like to flop around once you lay them down, right? Got the interior lights, which light up the hatch in there. And also, the uh, storage hatch, and then you have the deck lights here, which I like on a separate switch. Then I added this little guy after the fact, and I added a red LED in here, which I like to use this when I night fish. Sometimes I take pictures with the catch board in the red too, but just more so for ambiance. And I made this little track here by my uh, little custom mount that I made, and I put the red LED strip, and then I used the white. Going back, I kind of wish I did the Plash multicolor, but back then, honestly, I didn't know about it. Um, speaking of Plash, it's one of the one of my favorite things about this boat is I added these Plash strips on both sides of the boat. Check this out. Bam. I got pre-programmed colors, or you could just any color of the rainbow that your heart desires. You could change the brightness on these things. You could go up and down. I actually keep a second remote in my truck and I like to drive on the highway with the lights on white. And it's not just for so people could be like, ooh, look at this guy, you know? It's for safety. I wanna make sure people see my boat. No one's gonna change lanes and hit this thing because if someone hit my boat, I don't know what I would do. I would lose my mind probably. So that's why I like that. And it's actually amazing for release videos at night. Last summer I caught my PB and I had the red light on and it just shines down into the water. 
and you just get really really cool release videos launching the boat backing it down a trail it's uh extremely useful for all those scenarios and that's pretty much the boat let's just go over the trailer quick because i got a couple cool things here that i did uh just from trial and error and so i broke a lot of trailer tail lights backing into some sketchy places so i actually got these guide on bunks and then i put the pvc on top and i put the light on there i drilled a hole on top of the light and i put these uh guide post lights on on top of them so now i when i'm i could just see the trailer when i'm backing the truck up it makes it a lot easier so that's one thing the second thing i did was you know i got the uh the i think it's the five strand wire for the trailer harness or seven i forget what it is the bigger one but i added reverse lights that was real honestly not very hard and it's a night and day difference back in this thing down a trail where it's dark in the middle of nowhere um then i got the two wide rollers in the middle and then i put two more rollers in the front this thing goes on the trailer effortlessly um it self-corrects itself very easy you want everything just to work you know i even put some uh gator patch on all the high contact areas i got one in the front of the keel just for wear and tear it'll prevent the boat hull from getting damaged last but not least guys the sea deck this is absolutely my favorite part of this build it ties it all together and elevated it to whole new levels and you know guys could be like oh is it worth it well i don't know you tell me look at this thing you know everybody was crying about lithium batteries when they came out they're like oh it's so expensive but you know what they're the new norm after this boat people started putting sea decks in smaller boats that's going to become the new norm and i can tell you from experience fishing on this thing on a 12-hour day a million times better on my back so if you need anything to build a tiny boat you know where to go tiny boat nation hit up nate hit up mike lopez nick Barr. these guys are extremely helpful they helped me through this whole process i had no idea what i was doing no idea they sell everything i mean this thing is framed out with uh, aluminum aluminum sheeting everything they have everything you need everything that's in this build you could get through those guys all right so good luck guys ask questions it's not rocket science i literally had no idea what i'm doing i'm not super handy i'm just a decent problem solver if you guys want to see more of this bad boy follow me on my instagram seb2fn and come check me out on some epic bass fishing adventures good luck guys